Hey everyone, welcome to Alchemy of Zero Phase. I'm Eric, here with my little one, and uh, we're going to show you something that we've been working on, and I'm hoping it will uh, help make things easier or whatever for those who like staying inside the automatic 1111 interface. Um, I have created an extension that ties in really well with my prompt generator um, that gives you a little bit of control so you're not having to do as much typing in, in various instances. Um, most of you are aware that I have a prompt generator that I've been working on for several months now um, that works in ChatGPT. Um, those of you who have purchased the uh, script or the uh, seed prompt for this are pretty familiar with this. You come in here and when you paste it in, it'll come up saying what kind of prompts can I generate for you. And then you just come in here and tell it what you want. And I've built in certain commands and, and structures to bring, bring really good prompts forward. So just as an example here before I move into the extension. So normally, like if you wanted labels, you put in a dollar label, and um, if you had multiple prompts, so by default, this prompt generator will generate three prompts uh, if you don't specify. But if you want more, like let's say five prompts, and let's say you wanted it to add style information, you put in style, and then you give it what you want. So professional photography of, um, New York City. We'll just leave it at that. And then you would put that in and uh, it would generate your prompts for you. Give it a second here. There we go. So it generates five prompts. Uh, well laid out, well for it, includes camera information, breaks at the proper times, all sorts of stuff. Great prompt generator. So um, what I don't like, what I was very frustrated with was, uh, one, having to type the commands in and the number of prompts. It gets tedious. I usually just leave it there and then type out something in the end. And um, then the whole process of copying and then moving over to uh, the tab that uh, has automatic 1111 on it. And then going down here and pasting it in. So I... I started using ChatGPT Code Interpreter, and it's phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't played with it, you really should. What it can do is just amazing. And I created an extension, I call it ZeroGen. And what this is, is it gives you the ability to interface with ChatGPT and generate prompts right here inside the interface. And so when you first go to it, uh, you'll get it at, I actually set up a GitHub and, and uh, Call it zero gen. You can come in here and grab the uh, the link for this, and just like any other extension, you go over to the extensions tab and and uh, install from URL, paste it in there, and install. I'm going to submit it to have it part of the extensions library, so it will be available when you hit load from here. It will just show up in here. Okay. So uh, let's jump over here, and when you first install it, okay. One of the first things it does as it loads is it creates three different CSV files. Those CSV files are for storing the uh, API key, your seed prompts, uh, as well as prompts that you generate. I've actually got it set so if you click this option here, it'll save your prompts to a CSV file for future use if you want. So that was the other problem I had is I, because in my prompt generator here, it would generate the prompts, but then to effectively use this, I would have to go back, edit this, put in a new, uh, a new prompt, a uh, giant uh, flower attacking uh, Chicago. And I would lose those prompts I had, and I wasn't really saving. Now, if I generated images with it, yes, I could go back and, and uh, uh, extract that information out of those images. It gets a little tedious that way, but I thought it'd be nicer to have a CSV file that just contain them, and I can go back to them and take a look at it. And it even saves the um, uh, your request so that uh, you know what you asked for to get something like that, to get that prompt. So just as a quick walkthrough on how to use this, uh, again, you'll install like normal, like any other extension. Uh, when you uh, open your uh, OpenAI account, you don't need 
to do the premium for this, but um, it does it does help. I think in some ways gives you access to certain models or whatnot. But to get access to this, this is going to cost money. I'm going to say that up front because in, this uses the API backend of OpenAI, and they do a cost per token, and it depends on which model you're using. The GPT 3.5 Turbo is probably their cheapest one. So what you would do is come up here, you just call it whatever it is. Well, you know, for mine, I think I named it OpenAI, but uh, we'll just do OpenAI2. And here's where you would paste your, your uh, token, or sorry, not your token, your API key. And you, know, you just kind of put, you paste it in there, make sure you mark new API key, hit add and it adds it okay and the csv files are located in the extension folder under scripts so um, if you're familiar with how extensions work there's an extension folder in the uh, web ui folder you go into extensions you'll go into uh, zero gen which is the name of the extension and then scripts and there's three csv files in there okay so you can go back and look at them later uh, once you load those, you probably want to load your seed prompt as well. So you'd select that if you have the my stable diffusion prompt gener generator, or if you have your own. Um, uh, there are other people who develop their own personal prompt generators. I've met a couple of them. They aren't selling it like I am, but they aren't giving it away either. Um, it's kind of like their secret tool, whatever. But I do sell mine. It's on my shop. But um, the same thing. You title it, paste your prompt in here that you use to generate prompts, make sure you select new seed prompt, hit add. And it adds it into the prompt.csv file, okay? Now, when you get those added in, uh, you'd want to reload the interface. So you come over to either settings or extensions and just click um, the apply and restart, or if you're under settings, just restart UI, okay? Or you can just close it down and reload it, either way, okay? Once you get that done, then you can come down here and click these drop down menus or drop up menus in this case, and you'll see my OpenAI key title there. So it's not going to actually show the API key. Um, it just shows the title that you give it. Okay. And then you're going to select your seed prompt if you have one. I've got this set up so you actually don't even need to. You could come in here and just type in your message and it will return whatever from ChatGPT. The seed prompt. This is my prompt generator, gives ChatGPT all the instructions that it needs to generate prompts, okay? And the next thing you want to do, once you get those two selected, is come over here and select your model. So in this particular instance, we're going to be using the GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then in here, we're just going to make our request. I want a, um, we're going to go uh, oil painting. Oh, let's see back. Oil painting of a dog frolicking in, I spelled it wrong, the river in the woods. Okay, get that in and now you can come down here and select, well, how many prompts do you want? Okay, as my prompt generator is set up right now and with the token limit of GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is 4,096 effectively, 97, um, it'll generate about five prompts. Depending on how long they are, it might cut off a little bit of the fifth prompt, but typically it'll generate five prompts. So we're going to do five. Um, I'm not going to save the responses for this one, but I'm going to add label, style, and the trend information on it. Okay, what this does is it adds the commands that I normally would have typed in either at the beginning or at the end. Like if I wanted the trend information, I would have put in... Oops, I would have put in... Uh, at the end of this, I would have put comma dollars trend, and it would have added trending information, or, or typically, you know, AI is a little sketchy sometimes, but this prompt generator is pretty stable. So on this one here, low angle digital portrait painting in the style of H.R. Giger, and then down here, trending on our station. Perfect, beautiful. Okay, so anyway, so that's how you would actually add um, those commands okay just put the check marks in this time so you don't have to actually type that in you just type in what you want here make sure you have all these selected number of prompts hit submit okay it sends that api call out to openai using your api key 
And with the turbo model, it doesn't take too long before it generates the prompts. And there we go. Okay. And it looks like it did generate a full five prompts. And from here, you can just copy. And uh, you know, you can do one at a time. One of the changes I will make here is I'm going to have this parse this out so that each individual prompt will have like a send to or like a checkbox next to it and then uh, a button down the bottom that has like send to text to image or send to image to image or whatever. But in the meantime, for right now, you just highlight what you want to uh, generate, go back over here, paste it in. And uh, I think we're going to do that. We'll do an image here just for kicks. I'm not going to put a negative prompt. I'm going to give give you a little bit of advice when it comes to negative prompts. Okay, you can go overkill. In fact, a lot of times now I'm finding I don't even want a negative prompt depending on what I'm doing. Especially well, let me let me cab it. Cab, uh, let me uh, uh, reiterate that. Um, as long as I'm working with the SDXL models. Um, I'm finding out myself not using my negative prompts as much. Or if I do use them, I have this extension installed called Negative Prompt Weight. And what this does, it allows me to reduce the effect of my negative prompt. Okay, Still has an effect, and I actually am finding more and more often that I don't like having that there. So we're going to throw that out, let it generate it. We're going to see a cool image here, I think. Give it a second to kind of initialize. There we go. And there's our dog frolicking in the river in the forest. <laughs> um, yeah, my prompt generator does a really good job. I've spent a lot of time on this. I love developing it. Um, I, I, I do charge for it because it helps pay for that development. It's a one-time charge. You know, uh, a lot of you listening to this probably already get that. Um, and uh, if you want, you can access, uh, just ask for an invite to our Discord. You can go, or to my Discord, you can go and talk to the people who are using it and, and uh, love using it. So, but this here uh, is free. Uh, again, you can just install like any other extension. And if you have your own prompt generator or seed prompts that you do to, or use to generate specific prompts, or if you just want something to interact with ChatGPT that doesn't involve going to ChatGPT, <laughs> there it is. Anyway, so there's your uh, dog. I didn't use a refiner on this one, so it's going to look a little soft, but that's a great picture right there. That's pretty cool. Um, I think that's about all I have. i got to get my little one to bed and uh, uh, keep looking forward to more updates on this. Again, uh, if there's some suggestions you have on what you'd like to see in this uh, extension, I'd uh, love to hear it. Um, I, I, I'm excited for this. Um, I'm going to... You know, it'll, it should work with my mid-journey prompt generator as well. I initially started off uh, developing this as a standalone app, but I wanted to make an extension. Um, finally figured that out, but I got to go back and redo the code so it is a standalone app, and uh, you can run it and actually use it to generate uh, mid-journey prompts using my mid-journey prompt generator. So. I appreciate anybody who's listening. Uh, subscribe and like. Would love to hear from you guys. Uh, we'll try coming out with some more content. I know I haven't done a lot of tutorials lately. I've been putting a lot of time into my or my my primary business and um, uh, making sure that that's you know where it should be. And this is kind of my little side gig, but uh, I really enjoy it. It's it's fun. It's a puzzle working with the AI to get it to generate prompts this good. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm more open to answering any questions and uh, hearing your feedback. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening.